like uh, first of all to uh, ask you to remind us uh, in simple words uh, the highlight of uh, your talk yesterday. Oh, the highlight of my talk. Yes, I was uh, discussing some recent calculations that we were doing with the goal of uh, still improving more the precision that we can achieve from the LHC. The point is that LHC now is in 12 years of operation. We have discovered the Higgs, but we are trying to find hints of other new physics. And I think these hints will be in the, in the precision, in the in details. The, yeah. So uh, basically I was discussing is, some yeah. uh, rather technical, technical yeah, developments yeah. It's, it's a bit technical to that aim at more. higher, higher precision right, in the right. calculations. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, the other point, although you are only a few days here, uh, uh, what is your impression of what we are trying to do? I mean, you have uh, an impression of a couple of days, but also of the program. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a boat trip, we have a Greek night, you have discussions and so on. Uh, just uh, tell us uh, your impression about uh, what we are doing here, okay. or what we try to do here. Yeah. Well, in fact, it's only my uh, second day here, but I think it's an excellent <laughs> setting, of course. It's uh, very beautiful to be here. And uh, what I like in the program is uh, that it's very broad. No? It really yeah, tries to bring nice. people from all areas of particle physics, basically, to the same place. People interact yeah. here. And, and, uh, and all over the world. From all over the world, yes. Yeah. But also in a, in a very broad setting of uh, topics in the field, yeah. which is really, I think, how progress yeah, yeah. Uh, happens when people meet here. And of course, it's so great that we can be back here in person after <laughs> two years of two years uh, online meetings. No, this, I think, is really prison. very, very prison. highly appreciated <laughs> by everyone who is here. No, but so. in general, I think it's, a, it's very good to have these centers where people come together, yes. also in a, in a, in a very relaxed, but also yeah. very intense, yeah, no? the very days high are level. very high level discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, thank you. And uh, since uh, there's lack of uh, time, uh, you see all these young guys around uh, with positive energy, as you can mm. imagine, uh, for physics and the research. Uh, what you would advise with your experience? Hmm. Well, that's a difficult question. Um, so I think, of course, enthusiasm is very important. One should be very excited about what one is doing, but one should not try to plan too much ahead the future because you know sometimes we are driven by very big questions in our field and you know in retrospect many of these questions get answered but usually not in the way we expect them to get answered right so I often see progress when I look back 10 years and I compare what we knew at the time and what we know now but uh, for the future, I think one has to be always open-minded, try out many things and try, uh, and try whatever one does, try to do as best as possible. So I will talk about a strange type of logarithm, the so-called superleading logs and a clever way to deal with them in higher order. Now, consider a typical jet cross-section at any particle collider, could be E plus E minus or proton proton. We have two jets. Um, here I'm looking at not particularly small jets. Um, in between the jets, there is some rapidity interval with veto hard radiation. We just say that all radiation between the jets should be soft. Uh, that's called a gap between jets observable or also interjet energy flow. Um, now, this is an example of a cross section that has this uh, unusual kind of logarithms. They're logs of the type alpha s to the n log to the m, um, where the large log here is the ratio of the energy of the incoming patterns, so that's the photonic center of mass energy divided by this veto scale q naught. Now, in E plus E minus collisions, these logs are um, single logarithmic. So for each power of alpha, we get at most one log. And they're called non-global logs. I will come back to them later. For Hadron colliders, something very strange happens. At one, two, and three loop order, it looks exactly like at E plus E minus. And starting at four loop order, one gets two powers of logs for each order. I should say this is actually a conjecture. We will prove this in our paper, but this is only known at this order. 
So these are the super leading logs, super leading because they're one order higher than one would naively expect. And these super leading logs are sub leading in color and they're not contained in any existing pattern shower. So they are completely missed in all calculations of LHC cross sections. Now, before I go on, where do these logs come from? The logs in collider physics always come from incomplete cancellations of infrared um, divergences, soft and collinear. So typically, for instance, we can have a virtual correction, a virtual diagram, which has soft and collinear divergences. And uh, these cancel, of course, against real emissions, as you know. So here's a real emission inside the jet cone. Here's a real emission outside the jet cone. But now there's the point. So if the emission is inside the jet, we don't V to its energy. If it's outside, we V to its energy and we cut the phase space. And this is the source of the log. So all the poles cancel, the one over epsilon poles. So there are no divergences left, of course, but there are large logs left, um, which involve the ratio of Q over Q. So if you have never worked on collider physics, this is how the large logs come in. Now, since these superleading logs, they happen first at four loop order, there's very little known about them. Um, they were discovered in these gaps between jets observable that I discussed in quark quark scattering 2006, and they were discovered with a question mark in the title. So it was argued that there might be these effects. There was no calculation, of course, really at four loop order demonstrating their existence. Now, later, two years later, the leading superleading log, so at four loop, was calculated for arbitrary two to two hard processes. And um, for a very selected set of two pattern channels, also the next superleading log, alpha to the fifth, log to the seventh, was computed, and that's it. No more is known. The all order structure of these terms, how they contribute to other processes two to n, let's say, and also the asymptotic behavior, like uh, in the Sudakov case, we have double logarithmic corrections, but we know that when we resum them, we get something that is extremely well behaved because essentially they go in the exponent with a minus sign. So for large Q, they, they drop off very quickly. Here, the asymptotic behavior was completely unknown. Um, so what I just want to get across is this super Of course, the path ordered exponential is defined by its Taylor series where the ordering shows up in the limits of these integrals. Now for quark initiated processes, we have succeeded to extract the superleading logs in this infinite series. Gluons are more complicated. We haven't published anything, it's work in progress, but we're pretty confident that the same can be done also there, which has been more complicated. I don't have the time here to give you all the technical details. All processes now using this formula, it's completely general. This is what the cross section is. You take this color structure, you multiply with some uh, factorials that come from doing the uh, scale integrals. And you see why the superleading log started for loop because we have three insertions which are not involved with a double log. The two Glauber insertions, the two column phases basically in the real emission. So that's why it starts at for loop. And actually note that the term was n equals zero which doesn't have a superleading log. It nevertheless comes from the same color structures, from the same type of effect, these Coulomb effects. Now, how big are these effects? So we look at quark-quark scattering because that's basically the only thing that was discussed in the literature. Quark-quark scattering can happen in the singlet or the octet channel, of course. And that's what we find. It's hard to read. So center of mass energy, 500 GeV, rapidity gap two. And that's the uh, and that's the sum only over the uh, so n equals not is excluded here so n equals one to n is what's summed for n equals one n equals two n equals infinity so the black line is the infinite tower and you see for instance pick q not of order twenty five GeV you see effects of order six percent or so um, just two more slides so these are large effects these are not small effects. Subleading in color, but of course it's log enhanced, so it really can be as large as a one loop correction. And of course, this is important for phenomenology. 
this is the last slide before the conclusions. Uh, phenomenology we have not done yet. We will do, of course, in the future. Um, but it's one very important observation that we made. Um, I have only discussed two to two scattering because this is the only thing that was discussed in the literature. But actually, the formula which we derived holds for arbitrary two to n, which is replace h4 by h2 plus n. And then uh, uh, the formula holds. And in particular, it holds if n equals 0 or 1. And this is something that was not appreciated. So in the literature, people argued that you need at least two final state particles to get this effect. But the point is we have all these collinear emissions. So we generate the final state particles anyway, even if we start with zero. So for instance, quark quark to C plus jet would have super leading logs. Even quark quark to C without jets would have super leading logs. And by the same logic, glue glue to Higgs without a jet will have super leading logs which could be as large as a one-loop correction. So this is extremely important, of course, to work this out for gluons and also to see how big the effect is. And if at all the color factors are bigger in the Higgs case than in the quark case, simply by experience with fixed order cut emissions. So this is my uh, summary. I showed you was the first factorization theorem for a non-global observable at Hadron colliders. This is completely new. It was also the first resumation of superleading logs, extending existing results not by one or two orders, but by infinitely many orders. Um, for now, only for quark-initiated spectrum, um, but in the future also for gluon-initiated spectrum. We have derived the asymptotic behavior of the series, finding a much slower follow than for Sudakov logs. And of course, it's important to go beyond this, in particular, to analyze these low energy matrix elements in more detail to see to what extent this factorization violation will um, manifest itself. Um, but you know, this is, this is difficult, but I think this can be done in this context and this soft collinear effective theory based approach really offers a path toward a complete theory of these non-global um, observables which in turn will have an impact on ongoing attempts to improve pattern showers. Of course, people are constantly working on improving pattern showers. And if these are effects are understood, they can be somehow included there. And as I argued in the end with the Higgs case, obtaining accurate calculations of these effects may be extremely important, even for uh, such a thing as uh, Higgs production in gluon fusion. Thank you. So, uh, one uh, point that we would like to, uh, to hear from you is uh, the highlights of uh, your talk in a simple way and a rather short. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation, George. Uh, I'm a theoretical particle physicist, so the quest and my dream is to understand what are the elementary particles of nature and how they interact. Uh, this we understand in large colliders where we smash particles into each other, and we understand this um, by uh, uh, approximating this interaction better and better. Uh, but approximating this better and better becomes very, very hard every time you increase the approximation. And uh, what I talked about in this conference is uh, importing new mathematical tools uh, from, uh, yes, communities in, uh, in mathematical research that are very, very uh, active right now. And this new tool is to called cluster algebras that could uh, therefore uh, provide us with a new organizing principle uh, mm -hmm. for accessing these new levels of precision and understanding elementary particles. Very nice, thank you very much. Uh, then I would like to ask you, okay, you have been a couple of times, what is your impression of what we do here? I mean, scientifically, you have seen the program, you have seen the relaxed atmosphere that we have and uh, interactive. Uh, what is your impression of what we are doing here? 
Uh, it's no accident that I'm here for a second time. <laughs> and uh, Some people uh, have been here <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Indeed, and uh, as you have pointed out yourself, uh, there is a tradition of 40 years of sure. uh, this initial school and then workshop going yeah. on. So this shows that it's uh, a very, very successful example. Uh, of bringing, expanse, expanse. Exactly. Uh, scientists uh, from all over the world and in this uh, ideal setting, uh, encouraging uh, the exchange of information of, and of ideas and I think uh, that it is excellent uh, not just for the scientific community as a whole but also for uh, uh, yes um, bringing science um, uh, yes also to Greece and making Greece highlight yeah, yeah. Uh, of this uh, yeah, uh, way, scientific we, research yeah. we have outreach a lot of outreach uh, uh, if you stay you might uh, the top in the hour uh, program. Uh, also, what uh, <coughs> we should mention is all these buildings that uh, we hope next year will be used as uh, office space. Eh? That will be excellent. And uh, the last uh, point, uh, because we don't have time, unfortunately, to discuss further, is to tell us uh, what you will say to the young guys. You see so many young people around uh, going to research in particle physics or cosmology or. Uh, gravity. What will be your advice to them? So I would say that there exists no uh, more exciting profession. Uh, <laughs> perhaps artists could uh, claim that their uh, profession is more exciting, but being a scientist really brings you at the forefront of trying to understand uh, what the universe is made of and answering the really, really big questions that uh, also, yes, uh, uh, are related to our own existence and our, our sure. purpose in life. Uh, so it's certainly a very, very ex exciting route to take. <laughs> One should definitely bear in mind that it is not an easy yeah. route. <laughs> and uh, someone should This take, should be emphasized. Exactly. Also, this, right. this, I think anyone... Uh, who, 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 I, I encourage uh, the young generation to really uh, uh, try to address the, the many big questions we have uh, uh, from all scales of nature. Uh, but they should know that be dedicated. This, yes, be dedicated, and they should know that it's not an easy task. It will uh, require uh, working on it for many years, changing places ac across the globe, and being able uh, to do this in order to uh, uh, make some significant progress. <laughs>
And uh, I think this is especially relevant to we hear um, uh, another talk about the high luminosity LHC, I guess, two days mm -hmm. from now. Uh, but uh, currently, the only approved uh, major experimental upgrade is the high luminosity LHC. So, no increase in energy, just uh, increase the number of events. So, uh, uh, using precision to be able to spot uh, events is one will be one of the main tasks of, uh, of the upcoming years. Uh, so, these are the things uh, that um, excite me in this uh, precision frontier and uh, why I think it's important. Of course, it's very hard and you run out of steam very fast. And uh, before uh, you turn into a version, this talk will not be about n equals for super young mills theory, will not be about the simplest interacting uh, 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 gauge theory, but it will be about how to import, successfully import some of the lessons we learned there uh, to realistic physics. Because uh, uh, in the past, there have been many, many success stories where in this ideal theoretical background, we were able to first uh, do a proof of concept of new methods that were then refined and uh, further developed uh, in order to attack uh, uh, the standard model and beyond. And uh, some examples, are, of course, are generalized unitarity that solved the one new problem forever, for every uh, quantum field theory, and it was first uh, done in the context of n equals 4. More recently, the method of symbols that I will hopefully be able to talk about uh, uh, and uh, define. And uh, very related to this, this is also the method of canonical differential equations, how to recast your uh, master integrals for any process in a, a very uh, nice form that essentially uh, is equivalent to actually evaluating the integrals. Uh, and all these were uh, uh, first uh, understood and formulated in the world of n equals 4. And uh, just to showcase their importance, one of the state-of-the-art uh, computations uh, involving uh, 5.2 loop uh, uh, integrals with one mass, uh, which are, for example, relevant for uh, W boson production plus two jets. Uh, um, yes, these, these would be the jets, the uh, collimated uh, arrays of particles of... Uh, Yes, from the partons that we also heard about in the previous talk. Uh, and I should also point out that uh, Greece is uh, making major contributions in uh, 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 yes, understanding the, these classes of integrals. The, the group in Democritus have provided full analytic and very well controlled expressions for these kinds of integrals. But the point here, here is that uh, indeed there is something to learn uh, from importing knowledge from uh, doing knowledge transfer from n equals 4. Uh, and with this uh, general motivation, let me talk about cluster algebras. This will be one of the main themes of, of my talk. And uh, these are beautiful mathematical objects that have been tremendously successful in uh, describing singularities of uh, n pop particle amplitudes in n equals 4. Uh, and uh, uh, this is one of the reasons why I, I have been uh, very much focused on understanding and using this, uh, uh, these structures that have, uh, as I will explain, uh, really led to uh, um, uh, results for the 6 and 7 particle amplitude in equals 4 to unprecedented loop order. Uh, and so, uh, from the lessons we have learned in the past, it was very, very natural to pose this question. Could cluster algebras, uh, this beautiful and useful structure in the realm of n equals 4, could it have wider applicability? Uh, and uh, in order to search for it, we looked at Feynman integrals because they are theory agnostic, they appear in many different theories. Then we looked in dimensional regularization because you always have divergences uh, that only at the very end you can cancel them and this is the most natural, uh, uh, arguably, way to do it. Uh, and to our great surprise, we found that this kind of cluster algebra structures and code singularity is also in a wealth of physically relevant examples, including QCD corrections to amplitude that uh, 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 enter uh, the computation of heat plus jet production in uh, hadron colliders. Uh, so we, we, I, I am personally very, very excited and look forward to understanding it in the future. But this is, uh, if you wish, the extended abstract of my talk. And now let's try to... Uh, um, uh, uh, in bootstrapping an analog of the Higgs amplitude in n equals 4 world. Uh, so with this, I, I will go to my conclusions because I'm out of time. 
Uh, there are several more examples that you are welcome to ask if you are interested, including how to go from the eighth particle amplitude in N equals four to five uh, gluon uh, scattering in QCD. Uh, so I invite you to ask. Uh, but I hope I can visit that the beautiful mathematics of cluster algebras seems to underlie a wealth of uh, physically relevant Feynman integrals and processes. Uh, uh, there are interesting to, things to do in the, in, the, in the future to see if this is more universal or we just get lucky. Uh, but if you wish as a vision and something that we very much like to understand is whether cluster algebras could provide uh, a kind of uh, uh, organizing principle as you go with genetic materials that would simplify future collider physics calculations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Could you uh, describe in uh, uh, simple words uh, uh, the main points of your talk? Or... Uh, yes, uh, we uh, have a very successful uh, models for particle physics and cosmology. So there are two models which are complementary, and but they are very successful from the experimental viewpoint. But we have the suspicion that the, this is not, not none of them is the ultimate theory mm -hmm. of physics. So we are searching for beyond what are known as the standard models, and we are uh, searching for completions of mm -hmm. this model. What is next? And my talk was about one possibility, which uh, is quite promising, and explains that uh, there are not too many options and some of them are better than others and this was the main subject of my talk. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, although you have not been before here, you have uh, already some impression of what we are doing here. Uh, I should add uh, that uh, you do something very similar in uh, Benasque in Piren uh, uh, in uh, Spain. So uh, it might look like a competition, but uh, we should make clear that we are collaborating and uh, by no means uh, uh, competing. Uh, in any case, what is your impression of uh, our uh, meeting or our meetings uh, from what you know so far and uh, the prospects from the program? I mean, also it's my first time here. I knew a lot about the uh, Corfu Institute. I, I knew you first, yeah. and I also knew a lot of Spaniards who, well, regularly coming to these meetings and uh, their impression is very positive so I was willing to come but unfortunately I, I was not able to come till now and this is my first meeting after we're very pandemic. happy to have you of yeah. course. and concerning the institute you mentioned which I'm running in the Spanish Pyrenees which is the Benasque Center for Science uh, we are not competing. I mean, we are in the mountains, you are on the seaside, <laughs> but... It's we like are complementary, right? Complementary. You know, it's like physics. We, uh, there are different labs in the world, but uh, there is a kind of friendly competition, <laughs> and all of them yeah. take advantage of the progress of the, of the experience other. Of the, yeah. Yeah. And I, I see that uh, we are very uh, happy with having both, because number of physicists is very large in the world and mm -hmm. we are not uh, only focused on physics like here so we have some other brands of, for instance genetics mm -hmm. mathematics we try also here but uh, this uh, we had some uh, solid state with that and so on mm -hmm. even philosophy but this was uh, uh, minor uh, so far but uh, our uh, our intention will be to to, to, to expand to all uh, all science yeah, yeah I, I, it's a good idea. Yeah. We also had a similar experience there. Uh, some few years ago, we had a meeting about Greek philosophy oh, in Benasque. Okay, <laughs> that's very interesting. It was quite interesting. It's classical. Uh, yeah. And because of time, you know, we have a pressure of, uh, of time. Uh, uh, what you will advise uh, the young researchers who start right now in our field, uh, either on particle physics or on uh, uh, 
cosmology and relativity in general. I think that the, the situation today is uh, quite different of the one which we met in the past because now in particle physics it seems that the theory is stabilized so too too much successful so but still there are many things you can do I mean from experimental viewpoint of course the big experiments are going on and many ideas for and beyond they them. will provide and also I should add that uh, at least from my view in in, in many uh, Western countries the physics is attracting a lot of young people mm -hmm. to to undergraduate studies and also to research so I will tell these students just to keep going and work hard because it's not an easy it's a job. Competitive, it's a competitive job. It's right. a very competitive, but the, those who, I mean, uh, are more stronger, uh, they will get better positions. Right. But uh, I think that this always very attractive uh, field, and I will not discourage people of coming. the organizers for uh, the invitation to give this talk, especially to George and Guy. <coughs> we agree that the standard model uh, is very successful from the monologue point of view. We have seen this morning how it survives all possible tests being made. But we uh, there is an increasing um, evidence that this is an effective theory and requires to be completed we do not expect that this is the ultimate theory of particle physics there are many ways of completing the theory it's the mystery how to complete it and how nature follows one of the completions but one possible way of doing it, which i will discuss is just by including uh, higher derivative terms uh, most of the completions required to introduce new fields, new interactions, higher order interactions terms, but this particular uh, way of doing is very special. And uh, let's see what are uh, the effects of this completion. Uh, this um, work is motivated by what has been done in the recent years in, in quantum gravity, conservative approach to quantum gravity based on field theory local field theory or non-local field theory, uh, which includes higher derivative terms in the in classical action of gravity. One of these models, which is particularly successful in explaining uh, uh, scalar <coughs> tensor ratio in cosmology coming from Planck satellite data, is the Stravinsky model, which is of this type. It includes higher order terms uh, besides the Einstein term in the gravity. So why this has not been uh, considered so early is because there are a lot of problems with this kind of completions, uh, which usually associated to gross causality, a loss of causality and unitarity. This is why this kind of theories has been disregarded since long ago. So let's forget about the massive uh, particles of the standard model and just concentrate the higher derivative terms of the gauge interactions. So in particular, this is the model we shall consider in top of the pure gauge Camus term of the <coughs> standard model, we include a higher order term, which of course it is, uh, um, irrelevant from the field theoretical viewpoint because it it breaks uh, conformal invariance and introduce a new scale which uh, will be large enough to uh, produce the low energy behavior which is uh, in agreement with the experimental data at low energies and also has the nice properties of the theory at higher energy levels the term which is here is a very special one. It's a sandwich between two field uh, strength tensors and some differential operator, which is the host Laplacian type. This is the differential form language, but in explicit terms, 
you can see as an uh, ordinary Laplacian uh, and uh, some commutator with the field strength. In particular, if the exponent of this operator is one, you can see that immediately F cubed terms appear in this higher order uh, completion of the H series. Another nice property of this kind of uh, completing the Jamil theory is that uh, this term in the Euclidean is positive, which is very nice because then you have a stability, at least in the path integral. And uh, also that uh, is so special that because of the choice of the differential operator in between here, all classical solutions of Euclidean field theory associated to Jamil's are solutions of the new theory. In particular, instantons are also solutions of this theory. And they are minima in each topological sector of the full action. This doesn't mean that the contribution will be the same as the ordinary theory, it will be different. The bottom of the valley is the same, but the narrow of the value is different. So the one of contributions of instantons will be different. In particular, this will be uh, an interesting question how the action effective potential is modified when you introduce some uh, theta term here by the inclusion of this term. It will be different from the standard one. And it might be interesting for Asian search. Yes? Yes, it is. This is covariant. So this is, this is the major source of problems <laughs> to keep gauge invariance here. You see that this is the covariant Laplacian. So, and this is inside. This is gauge invariant, absolutely. So, but you are breaking gauge invariance to quantize. You introduce, uh, I mean, some gauge fishing, which is very convenient to choose this one for calculation. And then you see that the difference between introducing higher derivative terms in, in, in vector uh, like particles or tensor like particles like gravity is uh, in, uh, is that you cannot give, get rid of one loop divergences for scalars and uh, spin on how fields by introducing higher derivatives you can get a finite theory so no no need of renormalization but when you introduce gauge fields or gravity fields For the other cases is independent of alpha. So you need to renormalize at least these one loop divergences for the two-point functions. There are also divergences in the three point functions and four point functions. All of them match with this uh, contour term, can be uh, suppressed by adding this contour term, which is proportional to the standard jamies. So this is the nice property of this kind of regularizing this. Uh, theory with including these higher order terms. Uh, of course, there is a divergent part, but you can fine tune the renormalization by adding some finite part here, which depends on an arbitrary parameter, which we call a lambda QCD. I mean, this is an arbitrary theory, maybe electroweak part of the standard model, but it's an arbitrary parameter which introduced for convenience. So this parameter, uh, phenomenologically speaking, will be associated to the, to the scale where the low energy behavior uh, becomes uh, asymptotically free, okay? So doing this, you get, uh, uh, you can absorb all divergences in the normalization of the coupling constant and uh, the beta function, the corresponding beta function is given by this expression for general group uh, G, capital G. So the coefficient here is what decides which kind of behavior the coupling constant has at the large ultraviolet uh, scales. And it turns out that for n larger than two, this is given by the previous value I showed you in the, in the previous slide here, okay? But for n equal one or n equal zero, you have different choices, okay? So the result is that asymptotic freedom for this new, theory, it's only, only holds for n equals zero, John Mills, n equal one, minimal higher derivative uh, theory, two, three, and four. 
for n larger than 4, the theory is not asymptotically free. That's the surprise. And if you include matter, you can repeat the calculation. You, you know that matter always decreases the range of asymptotic freedom. You uh, can suppress uh, <coughs> uh, some of these uh, uh, values here. But for the standard model <coughs> case, all of them survive. So only uh, n equal or larger than five has this uh, property that the theory in the UV is not asymptotically free. So for these models, which we disregard, uh, you have a strange behavior. The deep infrared, deep ultraviolet, the theory is strongly related. And perturbation theory doesn't hold. So this is why uh, we were only interested in this case. So this means that the completion of <coughs> uh, gauge theories by including this kind of terms is very much constrained. You have very few models where this theory has uh, UV behavior, just five models. Well, the first conclusion is that asymptotic freedom is uh, more stringent than we thought at the beginning. I mean, it's very, very stringent condition. Uh, only theories with less than eight derivatives, extra derivatives, can be UV uh, synthetically free. All the others are strongly correlated. So even if they are uh, maybe uh, attractive, uh, uh, we don't have tools to analyze it because they go beyond perturbation theory. Uh, the nice property is what I mentioned, the mass of the extra gods, this high derivatives theory have in this limit go to in, run to infinity, which uh, opens the possibility of restoring uh, inequality and causality. And the open question is what if the same things happens in quantum gravity? This is under discussion and probably similar from phenomena occurs in gravity. This will limit the number of models we have to consider, which is a good, uh, for model building, is a good property. So that's all. Thank you very much. in simple words because it would be an outreach. Uh, what was the main point or the, the highlight of your uh, talk? Well, first of all, let me thank for the invitation concerning your question. I am interested in what are the constituents of matter, what mm -hmm. are the reasons why we are here in the form we are here. For example, we know that we have more matter than so-called antimatter. Mm -hmm questions like this and how to explore those at present and future colliders. So what I do, I give predictions to my experimental colleagues mm -hmm. and presented some of them during my talk. Very good. Very good. This fits with uh, uh, other uh, talks and services mm -hmm. uh, uh, that we hear here. And uh, although you have been for the first time, already you have a few days here and yep. you can see what we can do, where we mm -hmm. are. And uh, uh, we have these buildings uh, that uh, hopefully next year, I mean, it's, a, it's a long dream and we work hard for them. But uh, it's obvious that in a year we have office space and uh, stuff. Mm. So we can offer the office space to really do research mm. here. So what is uh, uh, your impression of what we try to do here? I think that you do a great job here. That's a fantastic thing, bringing people together of different uh, parts of their careers, so from young researchers to the more experienced ones. They have an excellent uh, program covering many, many topics. Mm -hmm. so I learned myself a couple of new things in the last days, which I enjoyed yeah, very we much. Always <laughs> we always so I like the format very much. So as the discussions we have during the lunch breaks, during dinner, yeah, that's quite intensive. 
And very interesting. So everything goes on uh, even in the social uh, uh, event. Yep. And uh, since you have seen so many uh, young researchers around, what will be your advice to them concerning, uh, you know, they should continue? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lively uh, subject, or it has a future? And, uh, in my opinion, it has a great future. There are many things out that will still be discovered, both on the experimental side as well as on the theory side. They have a huge ima imagination. My advice for them would be, uh, Look carefully what you're working on, think carefully, do not believe the old people, <laughs> try to develop new thoughts <laughs> and be very critical. <laughs> But go, go ahead anyway. Go ahead, yeah. that's for sure. If you're interested in you will succeed. I remember well what my advisor told me. Werner, so this was Professor Bartl in Vienna, he told me, Werner, I know you're good, but the prospects in Austria are terrible. <laughs> However, if you're willing to continue, you will, you will find a way. And he was right. <laughs> This is what I can also tell all other people. It might look difficult right now, but the future can easily change. Yeah. And there are many opportunities coming up. We have fermions. We would have would like to ha have some means at least to explain why is the top mass so much higher than the other quark mass or thermal masses that we observe in the standard model. But these people have invented already uh, several years ago this idea of partial compositeness. So the challenge is the Higgs transforms nonlinearly under G, because um, the representation of G over H within the H subgroup. And there are no, you cover interactions provided that the standard model fermions should be elementary. So should be realized linearly um, within the symmetry. So the basic idea is you take the elementary fermions that we have in the standard model, you put them in incomplete representation of your uh, group G, so the global group, this of course amounts to an explicit breaking of the group because it's set behind certain components to zero, which in a complete representation would not be zero. And then you can put the composite fermions. So these are bound states of the hyperquarks. In this case, in this type of representation, these numbers here simply indicate those are the charges of the new states that you would expect. The D and DU would have the same charges as D and up quarks in the standard model. So I did not put them here. In addition, the DLD here simply means that's a right-hand state compared to this, which are SU2 left states. And then you would get mixing between the standard model fermions and these hyperbions here, these heavy states here. And then you can say, okay, the top quark is those, uh, which has it's a linear combination of standard model fields, which happens to these states here. Because if there's only one generation, let's do it for simplicity. You can always make a basis rotation among the standard model fields. But only a linear combination couples to those fields here. And in this way, you can say you can get the large U cover couplings or large mass of the third generation via mixing with these new states here. So that's the basic idea behind it. Symmetry breaking. Of course, we have fermions. We would have would like to have some means at least to explain why is the top mass so much higher than the other quark mass or thermal masses that we observe in the standard model. But these people have invented already uh, several years ago this idea of partial compositeness. So the challenge is the Higgs transforms nonlinearly under G because um, the representation of G over H within the H subgroup. And there are no, you cover interactions provided that the standard model fermions should be elementary. So should be realized linearly um, within the symmetry. So the basic idea is you take the elementary fermions that we have in the standard model, you put them in incomplete representation of your uh, group G. 
So the global group, this of course amounts to an explicit breaking of the group because it's set behind certain components to zero, which in a complete representation would not be zero. And then you can put the composite fermions. So these are bound states of the hyperquarks. In this case, in this type of representation, these numbers here simply indicate those are the charges of the new states that you would expect. The D and the U would have the same charges as D and up quarks in the standard model, so I did not put them here. In addition, the DLD here simply means that's a right-hand state compared to this, which are SU2 left states. And then you would get mixing between the standard model fermions and these hyperbions here, these heavy states here. And then you can see, okay, the top quark is those, uh, which has it's the linear combination of standard model fields, which happens to these states here. Because if there's only one generation, let's do it for simplicity. We can always make a basis rotation among the standard model fields. It's only a linear combination couples to those fields here. And in this way, you can say, you can get the large U cover couplings or large mass of the third generation via mixing with these new states here. So that's the basic idea behind it. Of course, TV. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, this already brings me to my conclusion. <laughs> um, the Higgs models as no provide a viable solution to the hierarchy problem because this uh, Higgs is not a fundamental scalar, but a mixture between a bound state and a composite state up to the number Goldstone bosons. Generically, one has several pin GPs, not like not really Higgs, like it's in the minimal model. We have fermionic bound states, which are not only color triplets, but it could also be color octets, it could be color singlets. This gives rise to a very different phenomenology than it's usually started in composite Higgs models. In this particular M5 model, under very specific uh, assumptions, we find that the color octets are bounded in the order of 2.8 TV. Things will be different once uh, we Relax these assumptions. That is an outline here. What we do is we also look at different scenarios. There's a funny things like this five sweet charge could, for example, decay into a doubly charged pseudo number Goldstone bosons, would be like a doubly charged Higgs boson, an anti B quark, and then it would have two Ws and a B quark as a final state from this decay. So you would have to look for the LC for four Ws and two B chats and things like that. Investigating this. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>